The coronavirus is rapidly spreading throughout the world, and despite all efforts that are being made to control it, precious little is being said about a factor that is quite possibly our greatest defense against it, heat. Although there are numerous factors that help determine the transmissibility of a respiratory virus like SARS-CoV-2, there are clear indicators that temperature is the most important. The most obvious indicator is that colds and flus are seasonal. Most outbreaks begin in the fall and end in the spring. Thus far, COVID-19 seems to be following the same pattern. In China, where the outbreak began, the number of new cases is rapidly falling as the outdoor temperatures continue to rise. Of course, protective measures that are being taken, such as attention to nutrition, routine hand washing, the wearing of masks, viral screening, mass quarantine, social distancing, and border control are also important. The surpassing importance of outdoor temperature is demonstrated by the current distribution of test positive cases in China and elsewhere in the world. In nearly every part of the world that is being hit by the coronavirus, there is an inverse relationship between the average outdoor temperatures and the percentage of the population affected. The higher the temperatures, the lower the percentage of test positive cases. Even when we look at different parts of an individual country, such as the Northern United States versus the Southern United States, or Northern Italy versus Southern Italy, the cooler parts have more test positive cases than the warmer parts. In South America, Africa, and Australia, where the March temperatures are summer-like, the number of cases is only a small fraction of the number in those parts of the world where the outdoor temperatures are much cooler. That tells us that temperature is the biggest factor in determining the transmissibility of the virus. This is consistent with the well-established seasonal onset of colds and flus and the observation that the number of new cases in China, where the coronavirus pandemic began, is falling as the outdoor temperatures are rising. Of course, this is good news for parts of the world where the temperatures are high or rising. But what is going to happen when the temperatures in these places begin to fall? What is going to happen six months from now when the rising temperatures in countries like France, Italy, and the United States begin to fall? If nature has its way, the coronavirus is going to return with a vengeance, both because the virus is novel, which means that the general population lacks immunity to it, and because the quarantine that is being imposed in many countries is preventing the development of immunity to it. So what are we to do? The answer lies in understanding the mechanism by which viruses like SARS-CoV-2 are transmitted from one person to another. The typical viral infection begins with the incorporation of a virus into the epithelial cells of the nose and sinus cavities. Factors that affect the risk of this occurring include contact with an intact virus, a cooling of the nose and facial sinuses, and a weakened immune system. In most cases, the viral contact occurs via inhalation of airborne droplets from an infected person or the transfer of viral particles from a contaminated surface such as a doorknob, keyboard, or cell phone. It is important to note, however, that viral infections can also occur if, for example, a virus is transferred from one's own mouth, where the body's resistance to infection is higher, to the nasal cavity, where the body's resistance to infection is lower. The reduced resistance of the nasal epithelium helps explain why most viral infections occur through the nose. As we shall see, it also helps explain why most colds and flus occur during the winter. As the air temperature drops, several disadvantageous things occur. First, infected persons shed more virus at lower temperatures than at higher temperatures. Second, viruses become more resilient at lower temperatures, remaining viable for days, weeks, or even months as opposed to higher temperatures, at which they die within minutes. Third, the drying effect of indoor heating during the winter causes airborne droplets from an infected carrier to partially evaporate and, thus, travel further when the person breathes, coughs, or sneezes. Fourth, exposure to the cold causes blood vessels in the skin and mucous membranes to constrict as the body shunts blood to the core in an effort to conserve heat. 
This diverts immune cells away from the nasal mucosa where they are most urgently needed and slows the cellular and chemical processes that allow the immune system to function effectively. At the same time, the reduced temperature of the nasal mucosa allows the newly arrived virus particles to remain more stable. The good news is that most of these processes can rapidly be reversed by simply taking a hot shower. First, the hot soapy water removes virus particles from the face and hair. Assuming that other sources of contamination, such as a cell phone, car keys, and writing pen are wiped down first, the shower will greatly reduce the risk of inadvertently transferring virus particles to the mucous membranes, the most vulnerable of which are located in the nasal cavity. Second, the heat of the water signals the body to shunt blood back to the mucous membranes, thus heating the nasal mucosa from the inside. By making direct contact with the face, the water also heats the nasal cavity from the outside. This directly weakens any attached virus while at the same time enhancing the body's ability to defend against it. The heat of the water raises the body's core temperature, thus allowing the body to funnel the energy that it would normally use to produce fever into maintaining the strength of the immune system. Though extremely high fevers can be dangerous, moderate fever improves immune function while at the same time directly weakening the virus. Another factor that weakens the virus is the rising humidity in the shower room. Studies have found that the combination of rising temperatures and rising humidity decreases virus survival even after one hour of incubation. Of all the aforementioned preventive factors, the redirection of blood flow to the mucous membranes appears to be the most important. This is based on the observation that viruses we may already be carrying, ones that may either be commensal or pre-infectious, may remain inactive until they are transferred to the cooler, less well-perfused nasal cavity. In other words, we can infect ourselves with our own viruses just as we can infect ourselves with our own bacteria. This can happen, for instance, by touching the inside of the nose after touching the teeth, lips, or tongue. The surpassing importance of redirecting blood flow to the mucous membranes is also based on the observation that persons who routinely bathe in hot water before bed have fewer seasonal colds and flus than those who do not. The hot water causes the immune system, with all its weapons and supplies, to return to the battlefront thus reducing the chances that the enemy will breach the walls and establish a foothold. It is important to note that the gradual warm-up that occurs after coming in from the cold is insufficient to effectively redirect blood flow to the mucous membranes. To be effective, a strong heat stimulus is needed, just as a strong cold stimulus is needed to redirect blood flow to the core of the body. The combination of warmth and paradoxical chill that one experiences as the hot water makes contact with the skin indicates that the body's temperature receptors are being adequately stimulated. A hot shower also helps the body unwind by quieting the brain and relaxing the muscles, thus further strengthening the immune system. The external stimulus to shunt blood back to the periphery can be enhanced from within by consuming something warm, such as boiled water, hot tea, or a bowl of soup. The antioxidants in tea, soup, and the like have the added benefit of supplying the immune system with additional weaponry. Once the blood is shunted to the skin and mucous membranes, it tends to remain there until a cold stimulus causes it to be shunted back to the core. Hence, the best time to take a hot shower would be immediately after arriving home from a day's activities. Unless the body became chilled indoor for some reason, it would allow the blood to remain in an advantageous distribution until the following day when the body again met with the cold outside air. This is in contrast to a morning-only shower, which would provide benefit for only the relatively short period between showering and leaving home. In the event that hot water is unavailable, the radiant heat of a fireplace or the hot air of an electric blow dryer can partially substitute for bathing. In addition to the heat stimulating receptors in the skin, breathing in the hot air can literally melt viruses in the upper respiratory tract thus working to destroy them directly. Clinical observation has shown that persons who either substitute their morning shower with an evening shower or simply add an evening shower reduce their annual infection rate by 200 to 600%. Of course, other preventive measures, such as regular hand washing, avoiding hand contact with the face, 
and maintaining a distance from infected persons are also important. By far the most important is the hot shower, as demonstrated by the fact that most colds and flus occur during the winter months. Although some have attributed the seasonality of viral infections to increased crowding over the winter, the effect is likely small, as family members come in close contact in the summer just as they do in the winter, and the vast majority of people spend eight hours a day in closed quarters at work during the summer months just as they do during the winter months. The one important difference here is that the average humidity in homes and offices is significantly lower in the winter than it is in the summer. Although this would tend to increase the indoor transmissibility of viruses during the winter months, the effect is far outweighed by the protective effect of taking a hot shower every night in the winter and any time the body becomes noticeably chilled. So rather than waiting for the outdoor temperatures to rise this spring or getting caught off guard as they drop in the fall, protect yourself now and help prevent a resurgence of the coronavirus pandemic in the fall by establishing the habit of bathing in hot water at the end of each day and any time you become chilled. Please share this with your family and friends. This is very urgent. This is a life-threatening worldwide emergency. Even if we contain the virus now, the coronavirus pandemic is likely to become a much bigger problem in the fall if we don't take action now by putting into place this simple protective measure. This video series is sponsored by the Binder Foundation, a charitable organization that is dedicated to the enhancement of human life through research and education on disorders of the mind, body, and spirit. If you have found this video to be a benefit to you, please share it with your family and friends. And please don't forget, your feedback is important to us.